Hello and welcome to this AutoCAD 2017 tutorial video. In this video we're going to be considering polar arrays. So uh, let's make a start. So we'll start a new drawing. Uh, now the polar array option uh, will become clear as we go through this video. So what I'm going to do in the first place is just create uh, a square. So uh, I want this square to be uh, 10 mil. Uh, by 10 mil. So if I select uh, dimensions here, uh, we'll go 10 mil by 10 mil, and we've got our square. So I want to place it just there. That's where we want our square to be. Uh, I'm also going to create uh, a circle around this because this will help us to uh, to understand what's happening here a little bit better. So I'm going to create a circle again at an arbitrary position, uh, just here. Okay and my square I'm going to move uh, to the center of the circle and then I'm just going to move it uh, a random distance outwards I'm just going to move it um, 15 mil outwards like that. so we've got a circle within a square here now what I want to do is I want to create uh, a pattern of these squares within this circle at regular angles. So the best way of doing that is to create what's called a polar array. So up on uh, this modify panel here we've got uh, three different arrays, rectangular, path and polar. We're going to start off with polar. So uh, first of all we select the objects that we want to form our array. So that is the square that we've got here. So select that and press space. Now we're asked, where do you want the center point of this array to be? Well, I want it to be in the center of my circle. I want it to be just there. Okay. When you have selected your center point, uh, this uh, ribbon comes up, uh, this tab comes up, uh, and there's number, there are a number of different options here. So let's just work through these. So we've got uh, the number of items. So these are kind of the default settings. These are the settings that will just automatically come up. So uh, first of all, uh, it assumes that you want six items on there. So we can change that if we wanted five uh, rotated. So that now looks like that. We've got five. And if we wanted four, uh, we could change that as well. Notice that this box is changing as well. This is the angle between the individual boxes. So uh, let's go back to uh, 6 and you'll notice that this changes automatically. Now the reason that's changing is because this uh, fill option is set to 360 so it's assuming that you want to do a full uh, 360 sweep of these uh, items that you're arraying. Uh, so we can change that if we didn't want it to go all the way around uh, we could just say well we only want to fill up an angle of uh, let's say 144 degrees like that so 144 degrees and what it's done is it's taken uh, the six items that we're putting in and it's divided 144 by 6 to give us 29 uh, so let's say that we don't actually want six let's just say we want three and again, we've got uh, the start of it, which is at zero. We've got one at 72, as indicated there. And then we've got another one at 72, which is indicated here, which brings us up to our full uh, angle there. So we've got three positioned. So let's go back to 360. So we've got a complete loop. Uh, and let's go back to having six of those, because that was quite pleasing. So we've got six uh, in a full 360 degree uh, arc there. The next option we've got are the number of rows. So at the minute we've got one row, which means that there's only one of these uh, squares, uh, one circle of these squares, if you like. If we change that to two, you can see that we end up with another row on the outside. And if we change that to three, uh, we end up with another row on the outside like that. We can change the distance between squares. So center to center currently is 15 mil. We could change that to 20. Uh, and that has uh, expanded those outwards to look like that now, which is quite nice. And again, this is the total distance. So if we change that back down to 30, it will automatically change the distance between them to 15. So these interact with each other. So you've just got to decide which one you want to control, really. 
put that back to 20 this will automatically go to 40 which gives us our array there just a couple of other things just to take note of um, let's say we want to go back to uh, just three of these arrayed at 144 degrees uh, you can change the direction that they go in so it's going instead of going uh, anti-clockwise it's going clockwise like that so let's keep that there uh, that one change this back to 360 again uh, with uh, five because that illustrates the point quite nicely uh, or was that on six before it was on six wasn't it so let's go back to six there that's quite nice so we've got six there in an array uh, what we can also do is uh, rotate the items uh, so if we select that one uh, you'll notice that now the uh, squares no longer follow the uh, they haven't rotated uh, to follow the angle uh, that they've been positioned at so here they've just been kept in their original position they were a square to start with uh, and it, they're a square that is perpendicular to the x and y axis and every square has now been changed to that same position so it's just repeated this here 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 whereas if we go with rotate items it actually will angle them as it turns them so it, it kind of keeps them fixed on an arm and turns uh, the angle through so that's uh, the basics of polar arrays. Uh, I hope this video has been useful to you uh, and I hope to see you again for the next video. Uh, thank you very much. Goodbye.